الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اللهم لك الحمد وإليك المشتكى وأنت المستعان وبك ثقة وعليك التكلان ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأن تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته ودعا بدعوته إلى يوم الدين إن شاء الله تعالى This is our uh, third session uh, of our tafsir class We were going through the tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah And um, last week we started the actual tafsir of the surah And we, we spoke about the first five ayats of the surah We mentioned that the surah starts with what is known as Al-Huruf Al-Muqatta'ah Alif La Mim, we explained that the meaning of these letters are unknown to us, but they did have a purpose, and among the purpose was the tanbih uh, and the i'jaz, that it was a way to grab the attention of the kuffar and the disbelievers when they refused to listen to the Quran, and similarly was to show to them that uh, it was a challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We then talked about how this Qur'an is a guidance. A guidance to those who listen to the Qur'an with open hearts. To those who listen to the Qur'an and accept the truth. To those who try and act upon the Qur'an and follow the commandments that came from Allah Almighty. For them it will be a guidance. And then we described, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the beginning of the surah, the descriptions and the qualities of those people that benefit from the guidance where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that they are uh, those who believe in the unseen يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة and they establish the prayer ومما رزقناهم ينفقون and they spend from that which we have given them Allah said and then Allah mentioned that they are also those who they are those who believe بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك أو محمد they are those who believe in that which has been revealed upon you and that which has been revealed upon the people that came before you or the prophets that came before you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that they are also be, they have certain belief, certainty and belief and tasdeeq and yaqeen in the hereafter. So they believe in the hereafter. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that because of these things, because of their faith, because of their prayer, because of their spending upon those whom Allah told them to spend upon, because of all of these aforementioned things, because they took the guidance and they received it with open hearts, Allah promised them ala hudam rabbihim wa muflihun, that they are the successful ones. So now that Allah told us about a sinful awwal, the first type of people and their relationship with this guidance that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they succeeded, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us about a different type of people, those who rejected those who refused, those who denied, and what happened to them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak at length of another group who are very similar to the one who denied and, and they refused to follow the truth and accept the guidance, but what is specific about them or different about them is that they pretend they do. They pretend they do, and that's of course the munafiqoon or the hypocrites, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak about at great length, inshallah ta'ala. So, Verse number six, uh, ayah number six, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبَصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَةٌ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Verily, those who disbelieve. So now we are talking about another group as it relates to their rejection of the guidance that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna alladhina kafaru verily those who disbelieve sawa'un alayhim anzartahum am lam tundirhum it is the same to them O Muhammad whether you warn them or you don't warn them la yu'minun they will not believe now from the uh, the functions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from what he did was that he was a warner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran in many places that he came here to warn the people. He was sent to warn them, right? Bashiran wa nadiran. He was sent as one who brings glad tidings to those who accept the guidance. Wa nadiran and a warner for those who refuse the guidance. 
Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Prophet Muhammad here, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرُهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ As for those who disbelieve, it is equal to them whether you warn them or not, they will not believe. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring here to a certain type of disbelievers. And this is very important to understand because one might assume that this ayah is referring to all of the disbelievers, that they, whether they are warned or not, it doesn't matter and they will never believe. But then the question that we ask ourselves is, if that's the case, then what is the point of da'wah? What is the point of calling people to Islam? What is the point of the Prophet ﷺ if they will never believe? And we also know this is not true because there are many people who were disbelievers and then they accepted Islam when they received the warning. Among them are some of the greatest companions. Among them is anyone today who hears this warning and hears the message and accepts it. So it's clearly possible for someone who is a disbeliever to accept and receive the guidance and become a believer. So then who is the ayah referring to when Allah said it is equal to them whether they are warned or not, they will not believe. My brothers and sisters, this is referring to the type of disbeliever that heard the truth, decided to not believe in it, to reject it, to refuse it, out of arrogance, out of hatred, whatever the case is. People like Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl, who knew the Prophet Sallallahu was upon the truth, but due to their pride, their arrogance, their love for their idols, refused. And we also know that our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would try his best and he would want to guide everyone. He want to everyone to accept Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in numerous places in the Quran tells our Prophet, although this is what the Prophet loves, when Allah says, Most people will not accept even if you try. And this is the fact that uh, the message that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many reject and some accept. Right? Many reject and some accept. And this is the case for all of the Prophets. This is why in a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that in, on the day of judgment, there will be prophets with him is just a small group of people. One prophet and with him is just one person or two. Or and a prophet or a messenger that has no one with them. So this is the case of the message. Not everyone accepts this. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, among the disbelievers are those whether you warn them or not, it doesn't change anything, they will never believe. And these are the kuffar, the disbelievers whom Allah knew they would never accept. Clear cut example would be Abu Lahab, whom Allah said in the Quran, So, so Abu Lahab would have never believed. Because he, he, and Allah knows this, and Allah is telling us, and telling the Prophet, there are certain type of disbelievers, they will never accept the truth. They reject it. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا As for those who disbelieve, verily, سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنْذِرُهُمْ It is the same to them whether you warn them or not. لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They will never believe because they decided out of arrogance and pride and hatred and whatever else, other reason to never accept the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a punishment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then khatam allahu ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim wa ala abasarihim ghishawa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said khatam allahu ala qulubihim. Allah has set a seal upon their hearts or Allah has sealed their hearts. Meaning what? The, the truth will never enter their hearts. Now one might be wondering, well that's not fair, why would Allah seal their hearts? Um, isn't, but then what you don't understand is Allah mentioned in the Quran in a few places, فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ When they reject the truth, when they deviate, when they go astray, when they reject the truth, then Allah lets them stay in that rejection. Allah lets them stay in their kufr. And we will find some examples of that even as we continue with these verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set a seal on their heart. And upon their hearing. And upon their sight is a cover. And they will have a great punishment. May Allah protect us from that. So, there are a few benefits in this verse. One is Allah said, Allah sealed their hearts and their hearing. Meaning what? 
their hearts are sealed from accepting the truth. When they decided to refuse it, Allah let them stay in the uh, in, in the dalala. وَعَلَى سَمْعِهِنْ Upon their hearing, so they will not hear the truth. No matter how many times the Quran was recited upon them, they would never accept it. وَعَلَى أَبَصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَ And upon their sight is a cover, so they will not see the truth. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And for them is a great punishment. This is the case for those who reject the truth after it comes to them out of knowledge because they have a hatred towards the one who brought them the truth or out of pride and arrogance. طيب. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about another group of people. And there are also people that reject the truth. But there is something different about them. And they are, these are the hypocrites. And ikhwani fillah, the word hypocrite, it has a different meaning than it, it, when we talk about munafiq from the Islamic context, we are not talking about the hypocrite, the one that, well, technically it's the same, but we, we nowadays call someone a hypocrite when they tell you, uh, let's give a, an example. Someone keeps t lecturing you about wearing a mask, and we should be wearing masks right now, but then you see them not wearing them themselves, and you say, well, that's hypocritical of you. Why would you tell me to do something and not do it yourself, right? Or someone tells you, why did you go to the masjid, and you never see them in the masjid, and then some say, you're being a hypocrite. Why don't you go to the masjid yourself? So someone that will tell something, but then do the opposite is re referred as a hypocrite. But within, when we're talking about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-munafiq, the, the hypocrite, we're talking about الذي يبطن الكفر ويظهر الإسلام The one who hides his kufr and shows faith Pretends to be a believer when in actuality is what? A disbeliever And there were many of them during the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Specifically when he moved to Medina This is when munafiqeen appeared People that would say to the Prophet We believe you're a Prophet We believe in the hereafter We believe that uh, what you came with is the truth we are mu'minun, we are believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in great length speaks about them, their descriptions, their qualities, um, their mu'amarat and their planning and plotting. All of that has been revealed in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would tell the Prophet sallallahu who among the people are these hypocrites. And many of them were known. So ikhwan fillah, they were people that were among the jama'ah, among the sahaba, but they would claim to be Muslims but in actuality, we're not. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing those. And Allah says in this verse, verse 8, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And from amongst the people are those who say, we believe in Allah and in the last day. The last day, اليوم الآخر, is يوم القيامة, the day of resurrection. وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and they are not believers. So they're lying. They are lying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that indeed they are not believers. So, what are they saying? They're saying, We believe in Allah and in the, and in the, and in the hereafter. When we're talking about belief and iman, we, we mentioned iman a few times now. We mentioned in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, those who believe in the unseen. Uh, we mentioned those who believe in that which have been revealed upon you. Khwani fillah wa akhwati, my brothers and sisters, when we talk about faith and iman, it doesn't only mean to proclaim something. Anyone can claim anything. I can say I believe this, I believe that. But when someone claims that they are a believer, first of all, it means that they believe in, in especially when you're saying, amanna billahi wa bil yawmi al-akhir, like the munafiqeen are saying, it means someone that is claiming to fully be a mu'min in everything that the Prophet ﷺ came with. That means the six pillars of faith and the five pillars of Islam, fully accepting it, right? And with that comes responsibilities. With Iman comes Al-Iman, uh, that you believe with your heart, which is tasdiqu bil qalb. It also includes that you say it with your mouth, right? Al-Nutq bil lisan. And it also includes Al-Amalu bil jawarih bil arkan to actually act upon it, to actually act upon it. And this is why it's very important to understand that Iman is not just something that occurs in the heart, it must manifest in our speech and in our actions. A very beautiful example was given by one of our shaykhs, uh, Shaykh Saleh al-Sheikh, he mentions that there is no faith, true faith, except it, what comes with it is action. And he said even in real life, and he gave an example, he said, let's say you are in a building that is on fire. And someone tells you, 
listen, the building is on fire, you will die if you stay here, we must get out of the building. And you tell the person, I believe the building is on fire. And then you stay exactly where you are and you don't move. And then someone tells you, have you lost your mind? If you do not go away, you surely will burn to death. I genuinely believe that's true, but I'm not gonna move. The Sheikh mentioned that this is not true faith. He doesn't really believe the building is on fire. Because if he truly believed it was on fire, he would have walked out. He would have ran out. So it, it will come uh, with amal. La min iman amal. With faith, there must be action. And this is why with our faith, there is prayer, there is dua, there is the recitation of the Quran, there is fasting, there is hajj, there is more to it than just our claims. And that is a very important point we almost appreciate and understand. Now the munafiqeen, they say, Amanna billahi wa bil akhir. We believe in Allah and the hereafter. But then Allah told us they're lying. Wa ma hum bi mu'mineen. And in fact, they do not believe. And then Allah said, يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They try to deceive Allah and those who believe. Wa ma yakhda'una illa anfusahum. And they do not deceive except themselves. Wa ma yash'urun. And they do not even realize it. This is a very powerful verse, Ikhwan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that they, the acts of the munafiq are to deceive. Among their qualities is to deceive. They're trying to deceive. So when they were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would claim they were Muslims. They would want to be with the believers. But all of that is just something that they are saying, يَقُولُونَ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ مَا لَيْسَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ They will say with their mouth that which is not in their hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا But in reality, وَمَا يَخَدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ They are only deceiving themselves. وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ And they do not even realize it. Subhanallah. They don't even realize how bad it is what they are doing. They don't even realize that in the end, Allah knows what they are hiding. Allah knows what's in their hearts. And in the end, Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ جَامِعُ الْكَافِرِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ جَمِيعًا Where do the munafiqin go? Where does the one doesn't believe in his heart go? No matter how many times you say you're a Muslim, you'll still go to hellfire. Because it's what's in your heart that counts. If you do not believe, then you don't believe. Right. And among the characteristics of the munafiqun is that they are cowards. They don't believe in the message, but they claim to for whatever reasons. Some were spies, others they didn't want to be left out. And this is a, another thing that inshallah ta'ala ikhwani fillah, we must talk about people that are just with the crowd because that's the popular opinion. No, 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 you must have conviction. If you're a Muslim, you must have conviction, that is faith. You must, if everyone tomorrow leaves Islam, you must have the conviction to stay on it. If everyone tells you something that you know is wrong is right, you must have the conviction to say, no, you are wrong. Because if you're someone that just follows the masses, follows the popular opinion, then you're someone with no usul, someone with no manhaj, someone that hasn't got a, a true understanding. Because ikhwani wa akhwati fillah, we must be strong in our faith, especially in these times when we are dealing with waves and waves of different types of ideologies. Don't be someone that wavers with their faith. You're not sure. You have doubts. No. Be firm and strong in your faith, lest you be among those that lie about their faith and just follow the crowd. وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ And they do not truly deceive except themselves. وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ And they do not even realize it. So then the question is, what is wrong with these people? What is wrong with these people that they lie about their faith? What is wrong with these people that they are deceiving or trying to deceive everyone? Allah tells us. The problem is they have a disease. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ Allah says. In their heart is a disease, an illness. What is this illness, إِخْوَانِ فِي اللَّهِ? The scholar says, هَذَا الْمَرَضِ هُوَ الشَّكْ This marad is the doubt. The doubt that they have. They have a diseased heart. Ikhwani fi Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our hearts. The matter of the heart is so important. Allah speaks about the heart often in the Quran. Right? Just right now, a few verses ago, Allah said what? To the kuffar who reject, who refuse, who don't accept the truth. Allah said, Khatam Allahu ala qulubihim. Allah sealed their hearts. Right now, Allah is telling us about the munafiqun fi qulubihim marad. In their heart is what? An illness. The heart must be protected. Another benefit you will find is a lot of the descriptions Allah gave the believers, what was it? They believe. Believe lies in the heart. Allah mentioned they are the muttaqoon. 
taqwa, which is also in the heart. Most of what we have been discussing are matters of the heart. So the problem with the munafiqun, the hypocrites, is that they are sick in their heart. They haven't fully absorbed iman. They don't fully trust that which the Prophet ﷺ is saying. Mudabdabin. They are here, neither here nor there. At least with the kuffar, you know what they are. This is why Allah didn't spend a lot of time talking about them here. Two verses were enough. But with the munafiqun, one day they are with you, the other day against you, their faith is wavering, they have doubt, they're not sure, they want to please everyone. All of these are characteristics of the munafiq. And what you will find that is very interesting is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a lot of the descriptions of the munafiq in the surah. So you already learned a few of them. One is that they lie of their faith, about their faith. Another one is they are deceptive. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here, fi qulubihi marad, in their heart is shak and doubt. فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا And Allah increased them in their marad. Allah increased them in their marad. There's two tafsirs here, ikhwani fi Allah. فِي قُلُوبِهِ مَرَضٌ In their heart is a disease. فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا May Allah increase them in the disease. Or, فِي قُلُوبِهِ مَرَضٌ In their heart is a disease. فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Allah increased them in their illness. The same way, when those who reject the faith, Allah, let, Allah seals their heart based on their decision. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they decide to be doubtful, when they decide to lie about their faith, when they decide to claim something they don't believe in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Allah increased them in their doubt and in their illness. فِي قُلُوبِهِ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And for them is a painful torment. Painful punishment. Earlier from the Kufar, Allah said, وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ They will have a great punishment. Here Allah says, وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And they will have a painful torment. Why? بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ أي بسبب ما كانوا يكذبون Because of the lies they said. And told what was the lie, Ikhwani wa Akhwati fillah. The lie was Amanna Billahi wa Billyum al Akhir. We believe in Allah and the hereafter. No, you don't. No, you don't. You claim it to do, but you don't. And one of the things that Ikhwani Fillah we have to understand is when we claim to have faith, it must be with certainty. What did Allah say about the believers? And then the hereafter they have a belief with certainty, with yaqeen. And without certainty, you're not a believer. It's among the conditions of la ilaha illallah is al yaqeen That you have certainty in your belief. No doubt, no, there is no place for doubt in your iman. Tayyib. So Allah said, in their heart is a disease. May Allah increase them in the disease. Or Allah increase them in the disease. Both tafsirs are correct. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And they will have a painful torment بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ Because of the lies they were telling بِسَوِي بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ بِسَوِي كِذْبِهِمْ Another uh, riwayah or another qira'ah As we know the Qur'an There are more than one way of reciting it There are more than one qira'at Among them is بِمَا كَانُوا يُكَذِّبُونَ And that would mean They are being punished Because of the, their denial of Allah and His Messenger they denied Allah and the Messenger. They reject it. So either they are being punished for their rejection and they are also being punished for their lies. And these are among the signs of the Munafiq. When Rasulullah was asked about the signs of the Munafiq, he said, إِذَا حَدَثَ كَذَبَ And when they speak, they lie. طيب. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ And when they said to them, don't cause corruption on the earth, قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ They will say, we are peacemakers. We are reformers. We are doing good. So when, when they are admonished and they are told, stop what you're doing, stop these lies, stop the deceit, they will say, Innama nahnu muslihun. we are but peacemakers, we are but reformers. So on top of being liars, they think they are doing good. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Verily, they are the ones who are causing corruption. Verily, they are the ones who are causing corruption. Because when, they, when it was said to them, Stop causing this corruption, this lies, and ikhwan if you want to appreciate how bad the sha'an of the munafiqun was, think about it. During the time of the Prophet 
they would spread lies about the Prophet Sallallahu They would plot and plan against the Prophet Sallallahu They would spread the secrets of the Prophet to his enemies. So um, to appreciate them, they were almost like double agents. They were two-faced. They would say one thing and mean another. They would hope that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would lose. They would insult him. There, and there are so many things they have done to harm the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to harm Islam, that when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is calling them, whom, uh, that Allah is saying that they are the corruptors and they are the people that are causing mischief, of course this is the case. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala said, Allah, this term Allah, it means tanabbahu wa'lamu, be aware, verily, they alone are the corruptors, they alone are the people that are causing corruption. But they do not realize it, they do not perceive it, subhanAllah. So, uh, when to, to, they do not understand a shu'ur, uh, it is to feel something, it is to appreciate something. But they can't even appreciate the predicament they are in. They genuinely think that they are doing good by causing all of this harm. Because in their mind they're saying, well, if I claim to be a Muslim, at least I'm safe with the Muslims. But just in case things go bad. Just in case Quraysh invade and the Muslims lose, I can always say, well, I wasn't a Muslim to begin with. Just in case that if, if Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Ashab and the Jewish tribe, if, if there is a problem, if there is a, I can always say, I was neutral. They will never pick a side. They will never pick a side because they, this is who they are. They're cowards. And they have disease in their hearts. And Ikhwan, if you have to be very careful, people you, that don't have convictions, people that don't have beliefs, People that will be here one day and they will say another the other day. This is the type of people that Munafiqun were, and they caused a lot of harm to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah said, they truly are the people of corruption, but they don't even realize it or perceive it. And then, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ When they said to them, believe like the people believe. What, is the, what are the people that are being referred to here? The Sahaba. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا When they said to them, آمِنُوا have faith, real faith. Not the stuff that you're claiming. Have real iman. Believe. Kama aman al nas. Like the people have believed. Like the Sahaba have believed. Be someone that is faithful, like Abu Bakr. Be someone that has, the, has iman. Be like Umar al Khattab. Be like uh, Zubair ibn Awam. Be like Aish. Be like the believers. What, it will, what will they say? Anu'minu kama aman al sufaha. Do you really think we're going to believe like the sufaha, like the fools? So. Among the signs of them is that they insult and mock. Among the signs of the munafiqeen is mockery and insulting. Who are they insulting right now? Who are they calling sufaha? They're calling sufaha the sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu the believers. And then Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "Ala innahum sufaha, tanabahu wa alamu annahum hum sufaha." No, indeed, they are the sufaha. They are the fools. ولكن لا يعلمون but they do not know and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions what? that they are sufaha they are the real fools they think this will work for them but they do not know the truth and the truth is what? that they will go to the hellfire the munafiq the person that hides his kufr doesn't enter jannah ألا إنهم هم السفهاء indeed they are the sufaha they are the fools ولكن لا يعلمون but they do not know subhanallah now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And when they meet the people who believed, the true believers. وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And when they meet those who believe, قَالُوا آمَنَّا They will say, we believe as well. Remember, the sha'an of the munafiq is that he claims to be a believer. So whenever they come across real believers, they have to fit in. So they say, we, will believe, we believe. وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ And when they are alone with their shayateen, with their devils. And something that I should point out, ikhwani wa akhwati fi Allah, is that a lot of times when people say shaytan, what they think about is the, the, the devil, Iblis, and the jinn. But the word shaytan, ikhwani fi Allah, can be referred to people as well. And Allah does so in the Quran, shayateen al-insi wal-jinn. The shayateen from amongst the humans and from the jinn. And shaitan is someone that is far from the mercy of Allah, far from the truth, far from all that is good, someone that is evil. This is what the shaitan is. Abu Lahab was a shaitan, Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl was a shaitan, Fir'aun was a shaitan, the munafiqeen are shayateen as well. Everyone that is similar to them is a shaitan as well. It's not something specific for the jinn. Tayyib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the munafiqoon, وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا When they meet those who believe. 
So when they, whenever they would come across the real Sahaba of the Prophet ﷺ, whenever they would come across the believers, or even today, and something you have to appreciate is that munafiqeen are always present. And these ayats are always relevant. Even today you will have people that are munafiqun. People that claim to be Muslims but are really not. And this is a sad fact. There are forums. There are forums dedicated to people that have left Islam but still claim to be Muslims. And they meet and they have these discussions and, and they will say, well, I haven't mentioned to my family that I stopped believing. So they pretend that they might come, be coming to the mosque or going to madrasa, but there is no faith. And this is one of the problems, ikhwan that we are facing. We have to nurture the faith of the young ones and give them certainty in their belief through educating them. Through educa Especially when you have all of these different ideologies happening, we have to try really hard and do better in the educating of the youth in the educating of the people that are coming up and they're being exposed to different ideologies, especially when they're being exposed by people that, don't, that are against our faith. And they can easily be taken away. So we have to strengthen their iman through teaching them and through showing them the beauty of Islam. So, when they meet the believers, Allah said they will say they believe because they have to fit in. They will say the right thing. Amanna. When they are alone with their devils, what do they say? Inna ma'akum, we are with you. Inna ma nahnu mustahzi'un, we were just mocking those people. We're not really with them. We're not really Muslims. We were just mocking them. We were just having a laugh. We were messing about with them. Another characteristic of the Munafiqin is what? That they are people that try to be everywhere and with everyone and also people that mock the believers. It's very important to understand that when Allah says here, when they meet the believers, you can already tell when they are with the believers, Allah said, they meet. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about their shayateen, when they are alone with them, you can already see the mu'adal here. They spend more time with their shayateen when they are alone with them. When they feel comfortable, they say, inna ma'akum, we are with you. But did they say inna ma'akum to the believers? No. Amanna, we believe. It shows you they have more conviction, they are more comfortable with their shayateen because they themselves are shayateen. وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ إِنَّا مَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَهْزِئُونَ We were mocking them. We were mocking the believers. We're not really with them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allahu يَسْتَهْزِئُ بِهِمْ Allah will mock them. وَيَمُدُّهُمْ فِي تُغْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase them in their wrongdoing and allow them to wander blindly. Allow them to wander blindly in their hayrah, in their confusion, in their transgression, in their tughyan. The same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the kuffar to stay in their kufr, وَخَتَمَ قُلُوبَهُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sealed their hearts. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, so you chose this path, you chose to mock the believers, you chose to not have true faith, you chose to lie about your faith, you chose to mock the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then we let them. يَمُدُّهُمْ يَمُدُّهُمْ بَعْضُ الْعُلَمَاءَ said it means يَزِيدُهُمْ فِي تُقْيَانِهِمْ Allah will increase them in their transgression and in their dhulm and their oppression and their injustice and in their confusion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said يَمُدُّهُمْ اَيُّ طَوِّلْ عُمْرَهُمْ Allah will let them live long in their sin and in their kufr and disbelief. وَيَمُدُّهُمْ فِي تُغْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase them in their wrongdoing and let them wander blindly. And then Allah gave another description about them. These munafiqun, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, so far what do we know about them? So far we know about them that they lie, يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهُ بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرُ مَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ They will say, we believe in Allah and His Messenger, but truly they are not believers. What do we know about them as well? يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They're trying to deceive Allah and those who believe. We know about them فِي قُلُوبِهِ مَرَضٌ In their hearts is a disease, shak and doubt. What do we know about him? That they are liars. بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ We know that they are people that are مُفْسِدُونَ Corruptors. أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ We know they are sufaha and fools. أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ السُفَهَا We know that they are people that mock the believers. And out of all of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, Allah will mock them. Now, one of the things you have to understand is when we are, whenever we are learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about Allah's attributes, uh, what Allah does, that we believe that whatever Allah tells us He is, 
all he does is in a way that befits his majesty. Although mockery is something that is not good, but when we say Allah is mocking them in return, in return, this is kamali Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does istihza with them, you will find that in Surah Al-Hadith, uh, insha'Allah ta'ala. Um, طيب. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah 16 says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ اشْتَرَوُوا الضَّلَالَةِ بِالْهُدَىٰ Those people, meaning the munafiqun, are those who الَّذِينَ اشْتَرَوُوا الضَّلَالَةَ بِالْهُدَىٰ They have purchased misguidance for their guidance. Basically, they took their guidance. They took the Qur'an that they were supposed to benefit from and be like the believers. The potential to be successful like the believers. They bought misguidance. Bilhuda with the guidance they had. So their commerce was profitless. Their trade was profitless. What did they benefit? Nothing. They benefit hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And they were not guided. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us about the munafiqun. In, surah, in the beginning of the surah, in two verses, Allah explained the believers. Allah explained the believers. Two verses explaining the believers. Another two verses explaining, verse 6 and verse 7, explaining who? Explaining the, the kuffar. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after that, started explaining in 13 verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not done with the munafiqun yet, it will, Allah will give examples of them, parables, Allah spoke about the munafiqun. One thing you always have to keep in mind is that the kuffar, the disbelievers, and the munafiqun, the hypocrites, both are disbelievers. But the, the difference is, one will outwardly tell you, I don't believe, the other will tell you that they do believe, but in actuality, they don't. And even the munafiqun are anwa and asnaf. There are different types and different kinds. And here Allah subhanahu wa will give some examples of the munafiqun in surah, uh, in ayah 17. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي اسْتَوْ قَدَ نَارًا فَلَمَّا أَضَاءَتْ مَا حَوْلَهُ ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ وَتَرَكَهُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتٍ لَا يُبْسِرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said their likeness or their example. Whose example? The munafiqun. Is كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي اسْتَوْ قَدَ نَارًا Like the one who lit a fire. Like the one who lit a fire. فَلَمَّا أَضَاءَتْ مَا حَوْلَهُ and when this fire brightened and lighted what's surrounding the person, ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ Allah took away their light. وَتَرَكَهُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتٍ And left them in darknesses, لَا يُبْسِرُونَ So that they could not see. So Allah is giving us a picture. Allah is painting us a picture. After telling us who they are, after telling us the descriptions, Allah is painting us a vivid picture here. This method, and the scholars also call it المثل nari, the example of the fire. So imagine you're in a dark place. Imagine you are in a pitch black, dark place. Then, and your, what, what would your situation be? You would be afraid. You do not know what's in this dark place. You're scared. What do you need? You need guidance. You need to be able to see. So, someone lit a fire. This fire, when it's lit, all of a sudden, what do you find from it? Warmth, comfort. You can see what's surrounding you. Then what happens? As soon as his light was fired, it brightened the surrounding area. You can see. You're comfortable. You're good. And as soon as this happened, Allah took away their light. And left them in darkness so that they could not see. So what is this example referring to? What is this example referring to? It's referring to the scholars have different interpretations that the, the darkness is how they were before Islam, before faith. We are in darkness. This is why among uh, the, uh, the reasons why Allah sent us messengers is what? To take the people from the darknesses to the light. Because the Qur'an is a light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Faith is a light. So, these people, they were in darkness. Then a fire was lit. Now this fire should be the faith, the iman. 
but for them it's not. They're just pretending. How long is their pretending going to help them? How long is this con going to work? How long can they convince people that they are really Muslims? At most until they die. If they're never found out until they die. But the moment they die, what will happen? That light goes. That little comfort they had. The fact that they were, were among the Muslims. They were considered to be a Muslims. Now I want you to picture, for just as an example, the munafiqs in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu when the Prophet came to Medina, they said, we are Muslims too. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. But in here, they were dead. They were disbelievers. They didn't believe. And they had ulterior motives, whatever that was. Now, they are brought amongst the Sahaba. They are brought with among the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, the, the fire is lit. They are safe. They feel the warmth, right? Then every uh, win for the Muslims is a win for them. Every win for the Muslims is a win for them. Right? But how long would that last? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then, Dahab Allahu bi nurihim. As soon as they die, that little comfort they had, the lie that they were living is gone. When you die, you can't live that lie anymore. They are treated like the disbelievers that they were. Tarakahum fi dhulumatin la yubsirun. And among the benefits the scholars say in this ayah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they lit a fire and Allah took away the light. But a fire is not just light. With fire comes also uh, 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 the actual fire. The light, uh, the fire, the, uh, the, 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 the burning fire is still there. So scholars said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away the light, but they will still burn in the fire. And they will still stay in the darkness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being like this. Why? Why are they like this? Why can't they believe? What's wrong with them? Summun, bukmun, umyun, fahum la yarjirun. Summun, they are deaf. They're not literally deaf, but they might as well be, because all of the verses that they are hearing doesn't help them. Bukmun, they are dumb or mute. They can't speak the truth. Umyun, they are blind. They cannot see the truth. Fahum la yarjirun, so they will never come back. This is their situation. Very similar to who? Khatam Allahu ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim wa ala absarihim. We were talking about the disbelievers, how Allah said Allah sealed their hearts and, and their hearing and upon their sight is a cover. Here Allah said, كَذَلِكَ هَؤُلَاءَ سُمُّنْ فَلَا يَسْمَعُونَ الْحَقِّ بُكْمُنْ فَلَا يَتَكَلَّمُونَ بِهِ عُمْيُنْ فَلَا يَرَوْنَهُ They cannot see the truth, they cannot speak the truth, they cannot hear the truth because they closed their hearts off with their marad and their doubts and their lies. That's the first example. So the first example is someone who lit a fire, but then Allah extinguishes that fire. So even in dunya, if they are treated like Muslims, in akhirah, they will not. إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Now, المثل المائي, another example. أَوْ كَصَيِّبٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فِيهِ ظُلُمَاتٌ وَرَعَدٌ وَبَرْقٌ or their example is like a sayyib, like a rainstorm. Mean as samai from the heavens. Now again, when you're having these examples from Allah Almighty, these parables and these, um, these amthal, it's very good to try and envision, envision them and imagine them. So imagine it's raining. It's a rainstorm. Fihi dhulumat. And in it there are darknesses. Now these darknesses, the scholars say, Hiya dhulumatu sahab wa dhulumatu al-matar awi sayyib. Uh, it is and there are darknesses wherein it is night and the clouds they bring their own darkness have you not seen during the day if it's a very cloudy day it tends to be darker than a sunny day because the clouds block the sunlight so there are many darknesses imagine it's raining and it's really dark and it's not a normal rain it's pouring and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions وَرَعَدٌ thunder, وَبَرْقٌ lightning. There is so much thunder, so much lightning, the rain is pouring. يَجْعَلُونَ أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي آذَانِهِمْ They put their fingers in their ears. Because they, the thunder claps. مِنَ الصَّوَاعِقِ From the thunder claps, they can't take it. So they put their fingers in the air. There is so much happening. This thunderstorm, this rain, the darkness, 
the, the lightning, it's too much for them. So they put their fingers in their ears, Hadar al Maut, scared that they will die. Wallahu muhitun bil kafirin, and Allah encompasses and encircles and is aware of who? Of the disbelievers. Allahu muhitun bil kafirin, bi qudratihi wa bi ilmihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in meaning Allah, they cannot escape Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With their lies, they cannot escape Allah. Why did Allah call them kafirin? Although we were speaking about munafiqun, very simple, because the munafiqun are, in actuality, kafirun. Because what's mat what matters is what you hide in here. So, ikhwani fillah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and we will explain this. The lightning almost snatches away their sight. Whenever it gives them some light, Whenever it brightens the, it for them a little bit, فيه, they take a few steps. They take a few steps. They walk in it. أظلم, when it gets dark, قاموا, they stand still. Allah, if Allah wanted to, Allah would take away their actual sight and their actual hearing. Allah is able to do all things. This is known as المثل المائي. So what is this referring to? The rain, the scholars have said here, is referring to the Qur'an, the wahi. The pouring rain is the revelation. And it's giving you a picture of how they are with the revelation and with the guidance. Remember, what was the relationship between the believers and the guidance? A relationship of what? Acceptance. They accept and they obey. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ They are upon guidance from their Lord. وَأُولَٰئِكَ وَمُفْلِكُونَ And they are successful. So, when this rain descends upon them, they benefit from it. And that's why rain is beneficial. The crops grow, the earth becomes green, they drink the water, it is beneficial for them. And then you had the, the disbelievers, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, that they reject, they reject it. With the munafiqun, and Ibn Kathir mentions that the example in this verse are a different type of munafiq than the example of the earlier verse. The earlier verse was the type of munafiq that was lying from the get-go. Lying from the get-go. They were never believers to begin with. So the fire they lit was just the comfort of claiming to be a believer in this world and all the good that, they came, that came with it. Uh, for example, during the time of the, the, the Sahaba, the fact that they were uh, counted among them, the fact that they were eating with them and they were part of them and they found some comfort in it. But then, the moment they died, so that is the first now the some scholars say like Dabari that it's referring to the same the type of munafiq but Ibn Kafi mentions that they are different and and the reason he says this is because from here from this verse you understand that when Allah said it's pouring and there are so many darknesses and these darknesses are referring to the darknesses they are in their doubts and their misunderstandings and their and their not having certainty not being sure, am I here, am I there? They are, they're not sure. So they are confused. They are in doubt. They are in hayra. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in that, with that rain comes what? Ra'dun wa barq. The ra'd is referring, the scholars say, to al-wa'id. The ra'd, the thunder that they're hearing that they can't stand are the verses that relate to the punishment of those who disobey. The verses that are talking about the hellfire. They can't stand it. They don't want to hear that because it's describing them. So many ayahs are describing them and they know this. They know this. And Allah mentions in Surah Tawbah whenever a verse is revealed uh, the way they felt, that they get worried. Is it talking about me? Is it going to describe me? So, the thunderclaps that they're hearing are al hujaj wal barahin They are the Qur'an, its truthfulness, its power. To them, it's thunderclaps. They can't handle it. They can't stand it. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَكَادَ بَرْغِيَقْتَ كُلَّمَا أَضَاءَ لَهُ مَشَوْ فِيهِ Here is what Ibn Kathir said. When the light, when the, when the lightning strikes, it gives, it, it brightens it. For how long? For a second. And then they try to walk. That is the little iman that sometimes strikes their heart. And this shows that these people, they are in doubt. They're not sure. 
they're not sure. Every now and then, they feel maybe this is the truth. But then they go back to their darkness. And if you've ever seen a rainy night with lightning and, 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 and thunder, you will realize that it is dark, and every now and then you will see that bright, that spark. So they have this little spark, but that's not enough. That's not enough. They lie in tafi'una bil huda. They don't benefit from the guidance. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And when it becomes dark, they stand still. And Allah said, And if Allah wanted to, Allah would take from them their hearing and their sight. Their real hearing and their real sight. Why? Because they, it is as if they are blind and, 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 and deaf. And that's even the example of the dark, rainy uh, night that Allah is describing here. They can't see anything because it's so dark. And if, even if they could hear the truth, they what? Blocking their ears. They put their fingers in their ears. So, if you don't want to listen to the truth, if you do not want to see the truth, if Allah wants to, he would take their real sight and their real hearing because Allah, inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over all things and can do whatever he wants. Inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to conclude our lesson here. Uh, and from tomorrow, we will, uh, not tomorrow, next week, we'll start from verse 21. So from now, uh, you've learned about the believers. You learned about the disbelievers and the two types, the hypocrites and the actual disbelievers. Uh, everything that I said here that was true is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything that I said that was wrong is from myself and shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. Hada wa akhru da'wana. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil alayhi wa sallam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.